from New Orleans, Louisiana, it's the Cube covering .next Conference 2018. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Nutanix.next 2018. We're here in New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm Stu Miniman, joined by my co-host Keith Townsend. And while this is the North America show, we, we've seen the, the expansion of it. it we uh, actually have two guests coming in from the Asia Pacific region. Happy to welcome Rod Lappin. Rod, uh, SVP with Lenovo, thank you so much for joining us, all the way from Singapore. Yep, absolutely, great and, to be here. And we have Deepu George, who's the Senior Director with Capgemini Group IT, uh, in from Bangalore. One, thank you also for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah. All right, uh, so Deepu, let, let, let's start with you. We always okay. love you know, conferences like this, we get to talk to the users. Tell us a little bit about your group inside Cap, Capgemini, so, some of the challenges that uh, your IT team's been, been, been tackling. Yes, yeah, so I'm part of the group IT, uh, uh, responsible for handling all the data centers, uh, group data centers within Capgemini and we are responsible for delivering data center services, infrastructure services, et cetera. So uh, one of the key areas we started last year was uh, DC modernization and consolidation. And one of the key strategies we were looking at was uh, hybrid cloud, then SDDC stack, complete SDDC stack, support for that, and uh, uh, plus you know automation. So these were the three areas where, uh, which was a key strategic uh, areas for our data, uh, data center modernization and consolidation. And when we looked at uh, you know, the various um, options available, one thing which stood out uh, from Nutanix side was the, I mean, it checked all the boxes and uh, they had a very much, a very good roadmap on certain areas which were not available at that particular point of time. So then we chose, okay, let us have a POC done. We did a POC along with uh, Lenovo, and which was successful, and then we went ahead with this relationship with Nutanix. Great, Rod, Rod. Just want to bring you in here. Uh, we've been talking about really the, the growth and expansion of, of Nutanix. One of the big pieces is the OEM. Uh, Lenovo have been hearing good growth rates. Uh, Absolutely. Give us a little bit of the customer viewpoint. What you've been seeing, Nutanix in general, and, and the Lenovo HX specifically. Yeah, I, I think obviously, Stuart. You know, the very exciting thing is Nutanix is the leader in the industry, right? And uh, with them, Lenovo this last year we grew about 197 percent year on year. So makes us their fastest growing partner. Um, and in the North America channel environment, for example, we grew 280% actually. So we're growing very, very rapidly with them and there's real reasons. Customers are seeing the value, obviously in the solution, the consolidation of the data center footprint and obviously as customers are being pushed more, as Deepu just mentioned, to the hybrid cloud or the, what we're calling really the multi-cloud these days, right? Because customers are really looking at and choosing their cloud solutions based more on the workloads and what they're actually trying to do longer term. You know, I think we're best positioned to do that with Nutanix, it's a great solution. I think Capgemini is really uh, one of our great global, strategic global systems integrator partners that's taken a choice to, to run with Lenovo and, uh, and Nutanix. It's been a great HX solution for us. So Rod, before we get too deep, let's ask a basic question. Lenovo tier one server provider, you guys consistently in one of the leadership positions and in number of Unix ship, obviously you guys have the chops to build a similar solution. Why partner with Nutanix? Yeah, I think Nutanix, firstly, from a software perspective, I think that's definitely where we're seeing, you know, if you go back sort of 10, 15 years, that three-tiered architecture was where everyone was going, SAN and all that sort of stuff. Now, when you're seeing the solutions that Nutanix and the hyper-converged market is growing so rapidly at, you're really seeing customers recognize that they get a lot more value out of the software suite, data center consolidation, data center footprint consolidation, and really the ability to manage on-prem and off-prem workloads seamlessly you know, with the Prism solution, and we integrate that with our xClarity offering, our management suite, and as a result, it's a real match made in heaven. It's actually doing really well. Yeah. So, the pool. Yeah, to add on to that, if you look at software defined, right, I mean, that is a key area where uh, we are going right now. Most of, most of the organizations are, uh, for data center consolidation, they are looking at uh, software defined. And when you look at the network stack, you have SDNs and all those things. So, when you have a Nutanix uh, with an HCI with the complete SDDC stack, it all ties up together. It is pretty easy for us to, you know, uh, uh, completely you know, scale out the data centers. The flexibility we have 
with software defined. I mean, it, it, it's a good match, it's a good fit. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can you walk us through a little bit of the application side of what you're doing? What did you start with? What have you rolled out? What haven't you touched yet? Yeah, so once we started our POC, once we know that it was successful, so what we did was uh, we had our first data center consolidation exercise, modernization exercise, which has happened in Brazil. Uh, we had around three data centers which we wanted to consolidate into one as part of uh, our uh, consolidation and modernization st strategy. So we had a mixed workload there. We had SAPs, we had uh, normal applications, we had VMs running, we had physical nodes running. And what we did was we consolidated everything into a single data center on 10 nodes of Nutanix. And we closed down all the other data centers. And it was a pretty good uh, you know, experience that we had, the support we received from Lenovo and Nutanix. And most of this work was done completely from offshore. So we had a couple of our engineers uh, posted in Brazil for the coordination activities, but the physical work was completely done from uh, offshore uh, India-based our support engineers. So it was a pretty good exercise. We got very good support from Nutanix. We got very good support from Lenovo to get the consolidation done in the, actually, the, the correct time. So the pool, Captain Gemini has a pretty capable consulting firm. I'm sure you guys got plenty of advice internally as you set on set out to uh, select the vendor. Let's talk about that selection process. How did that conversation initially go when you guys kind of threw out Nutanix and Lenovo as a potential solution? Yeah, so if you look at the, the virtualization world, right, I mean, it's already pretty stand, pretty much standard. So when we looked at, uh, you know, the key uh, modernization initiatives, I already talked about the SDDC and stuff like that. We came out with a list of parameters that we wanted to look at, which is like, you know, there cannot be any compromise on that. And then what we are looking for in the future, when we, modern, so modernization cannot happen in a day or two. Right. So it is, an, it, is, it is a journey. So we have a two to three year window in which we wanted to consolidate all our data centers, modernize everything. So uh, the, the Nutanix roadmap on the various automation, SDDC, as well as the complete hybrid cloud uh, journey was pretty strong. And we had the complete management commitment from Nutanix that we they will stick to this particular roadmap and these features will not be compromised in any way. So that is one of the key decisions for us to go with the Nutanix group. Well, let's talk about performance. You guys have been Nutanix customers for a while. How, how has the roadmap matched with uh, the promises? Yeah, so from a performance point of view, so if you look at only the pure play CI uh, performance, right? I mean, wherever you have a high performance workload, we have an option to go with the complete full SSD stack, where, you know, uh, the IOPS is not a, not a, absolutely not a uh, you know, challenge or anything. There's no a huge throughput available. So from a performance point of view, we don't think that's not an issue as of now. Even with the traditional storage, performance has never been an issue. But the actual issue is, how do we make it the complete software aware? How do you make it completely controlled in a, from a software point of view? So there is where we found that HCI uh, used a very good challenging, uh, you know, um, what do you call, uh, it, gives a, it gives you a complete, uh, uh, you know, flexibility in how you want to define your data center strategy. So, so. actual performance, performance that's, that's really great. But I meant from the, uh, the promises Nutanix made from a roadmap saying this feature will be available on one day, you know, three months from now, a year from now. Were they actually able to deliver based on your own internal ro so roadmap of the capability you need? Let me put it this way. So if you look at the kind of investment that we have been making in, in Nutanix and mm -hmm. Lenovo, so you can pretty much assure that these promises are kept. So otherwise we will not be making that. So okay. Brazil was just a start and we have just gone ahead. We are looking at different workloads now. We have already looked at exchange workloads which is in, uh, currently in uh, delivery and getting installed now. We have looked at VDI workloads, one of the largest in uh, uh, Capgemini where we have 42 nodes of Nutanix running for around 10,000 VDIs. So in Bangalore, based out of Bangalore and Mumbai. So uh, if it was the performance, I mean if the Commitments are not met, I don't think we would have uh, expanded the way we have expanded. Changed decisions. Right. I think really, the, ultimately, as Deepu mentioned, they started off with a pilot, as he mentioned, obviously in Brazil, and he's ended up taking this globally, which has been a, a great success for if a story for both of our organizations. Yeah, right, right. could you give some more color on, on the partnership? Yeah, sure. So I think Capgemini is a great global systems integrator for us, um, both to sell to, obviously, as well as sell through, and they're doing some pretty amazing things with their customers. And I think one of the great things that we're seeing in um, in this particular instance, as we mentioned, Nutanix, leader in the hyper-converged space, and Deepu's made a call on them based on their performance and their 
basic feature set in their suite. And then ultimately Lenovo, who's number one customer service, number one reliability, number one quality in industry on independent surveys. So you put them together, we ended up having a great relationship from that point. And then it's built confidence inside Capgemini now for us to be going out to their customers and driving this solution out into their customer base. So it's, a, it's once again a, a great outcome for both of our organizations. So Lenovo has been a traditional partner for us, so it's not that they are new to us. So one of the main, major reasons is that they've got a global reach and you know, and we have global data centers and we have got global footprints and it, it's a pretty good uh, tie-up. Yeah, how are you measuring the relationship? A any success metrics from either the application deployments or you know, how do you measure internally so, and share that with your so teams? So we have timelines on our consolidation and modernization as, of, as long as that is met, uh, together with uh, Lenovo as well as Nutanix, we are, we are pretty good. So I love to hear about day two operations. What are, what are some of the benefits you've seen from a people uh, resource count have you seen resources freed up to do other projects? What are some of the interesting projects that you've done as a result so, of so, freeing uh, up time? So currently, as, as uh, we are progressing through this particular journey, so this year we have a huge uh, you know, focus on the automation piece of uh, the data center. So we are in the, we are in the uh, beginning stages of uh, getting automation. Uh, so automation in the sense of the, pro the normal provisioning, et cetera, is all a given. So we are not talking about that, we are talking about the repetitive task, which is the, which is as part of the data center, and that we have started. So basically, we are looking at around 20 percent uh, reduction in our ticket volumes, our uh, you know the normal work which is being done by the normal engineers, so that they can be freed up for these kind of modernization projects. So that's what we are looking at. So uh, let's see how it goes. Yeah. Tipu, one of the things we're talking about at this show is beyond just the HCI, it's cloud, even edge. What, 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 what kind of futures uh, do you see uh, for Capgemini in, gen in general and maybe with the Nutanix yeah, and Lenovo so, relationship? As I said in the beginning, hybrid cloud was one of the requirements for choosing the, the correct partner for our uh, data center modernization. So currently, as we are uh, beginning this particular journey, so uh, moving the data seamlessly into the cloud is one of the key requirements of uh, Capgemini from, a, uh, from an application standpoint, from uh, a visibility standpoint, etc. So there are, uh, we will be looking at uh, which applications is the target for moving into the cloud and we will be moving that. And uh, we believe that the Nutanix uh, hybrid cloud um, technology will be able to help us in uh, achieving that. And I think Stu, that's a really good point because I think what Deep is just describing is effectively what we see happening in the industry everywhere. You know, we go back 20 years in the industry, a few of us have been around that long. And we remember like a homogeneous environment. Everyone would say, I'm this vendor shop. They've got network administrators patching servers when we're getting hardware put on site and customers are doing all of the integration on site themselves. That's just what the industry did back then. Now, as we see workloads changing, it's a little bit like cloud. Three years ago, everyone was like, I'm going to be this cloud vendor. That's it. That's my cloud vendor solution, right? However, now it's become really acquiring the workload infrastructure and the software suites in line with customers' specific workload requirements. And so now, instead of going after one cloud provider, now you've got a cloud provider in marketing, you've got a cloud provider in ERP, you've got a cloud provider in IT. So that's what this whole multi-cloud, hybrid cloud type scenario is really starting to proliferate through our customer base. And you really find that, as, as Deepu just mentioned, they're starting, customers are really looking for how do they manage cloud, multiple clouds in multiple ways with different workloads, and they're really going out and looking and exploring how to best address that. And I think, once again, the Nutanix Lenovo solution's fantastic for that. I mean, you're going to see that proliferate more and more in the industry over the next couple of years. So yeah. one of the, sorry Stu, yeah. one of the comments throughout the show has been, you know what, the, and this is not a pick on Nutanix or anyone else, I just, both of you guys are not from uh, North America or Western Europe, is that the focus, a lot of vendors focus has been on Western Europe and America from a cloud perspective. How do you feel the Nutanix relationship from both a customer and as a partner has been on expanding capability beyond North American and, and Western Europe cloud? Why don't you go first, uh, Yeah, so if you look at um, uh, your uh, traditional Amazon and Azure, so we have uh, their uh, clouds which are already available in, uh, in India. So, I mean, there are, we have been checking that one out. We have been looking at uh, various options for various workloads. But predominantly, 
uh, we have been uh, our predominant workloads have been on uh, the European and the North American uh, cloud uh, for whatsoever reason. So because if you look at Amazon or Azure, they have come in recently into the Asian footprint with uh, in, in Chennai as well as in Pune, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Uh, yeah, but uh, I mean, I think uh, we'll get there. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So I think from from our perspective. Um, we break the world into five different geographies. So China, Asia, Pacific, Europe, North America, and South America. And when you look at our earnings this last quarter, um, well, I'm only about two weeks away from our next earnings, so I can't say anything about Q1, but the Q4, calendar Q4, we grew about 17% year on year, but we grew double digit growth in every one of those geographies consistently. So in Nutanix with our HX solution, which is really what we're talking about today, my Asia Pacific team is growing just as fast, if not actually a little bit faster than my North America team. So we, we see that this technology actually being a real worldwide phenomenon and it's really growing everywhere. Japan is fantastic, India is fantastic for me, obviously Western Europe. Deep is a great example because he's deploying this globally across all of the geographies and I think uh, we're seeing a lot of our G2000 customers really addressing that that way, but we see a lot of local companies as well driving in across the geographies. Asia Pacific's a great example. So if you look at, um, again, uh, to add on to that, uh, from an uh, HCA, Nutanix Lenovo standpoint, we have been growing in, even in India also. We have uh, recently done to around 60 nodes uh, within uh, Bangalore and Mumbai itself. So it's a pretty good uh, story. All right, well, Deepa George, thank you uh, so much for joining us. Rod Lappin, always a pleasure to Thanks, catch Stuart. up Thanks, with Keith. you. Thanks. For Keith Townsend, I'm Stu Miniman. We've got a full day of day two coverage here of theCUBE at Nutanix.next 2018. Thanks so much for watching theCUBE. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.